Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're going to be teaching a really fun class on player persistent variables and creating currency inside of your worlds. We're going to be keeping this relatively lightweight. We're going to build an ATM so that way you can see your balance. We're also going to be building um, like a way to sell objects. So when you think of like a game, the biggest thing that you're probably familiar with is that you could say, let's say we're talking about farming, for instance, like Better World, you do a lot of farming games. If we farm a like potato or a tomato or a pumpkin, we need a way to sell that object. And so the first thing we're going to do is build a way to make money, which is going to be through this idea of farming, selling the object. Awesome, you guys. So let's go Super. ahead and get started. Welcome to build mode. If you haven't been here before, please check out our create series found here as well as in the description. It's a great way to learn how to build objects and get started creating. Today, we're gonna to be working with player persistent variables and to access your player persistent variables, go ahead and open up your build menu. That's the recessed button found underneath your thumbstick on your physical controller. You can't click this virtual one, but there's a little button right about where that would be. Then let's head to the settings tab and under settings, you'll see player. Here's where we can create player persistent variables. So we're gonna go create a new variable and this one's going to be called called money because today that's all we're talking about is how do we make money in virtual reality games and just to be very very clear here this isn't real money this is all virtual money and so the next thing we're going to do is back in our build menu head to the build tab go on over to gizmos and pull out a script gizmo this is the key to scripting and the first thing we need to do is display a balance so the first script we're building is an atm let's go ahead and give this script a name so we're going to go ahead and call this one atm because it's going to display your balance. When world is started, uh, we're not gonna be using that, so I'm gonna click on it and pull down on my thumbstick to delete. And then we need an event. And so when trigger is entered by player is perfect. So imagine like a player puts their hand on a pedestal and it displays their balance. So when trigger is entered by player, we need to display on a text object. So under our variables tab, we can create a new object variable, and this is going to be called text. All right, so we've got our text object, and then on under actions, you're gonna find text. This says display text, and we're gonna drag that underneath when trigger is entered by player. Now it starts with a default of S, and this is just a string value. We're going to delete to this, and you can find string values under your values tab at the very bottoms, because we are going to need another one. And at the top of our operators tab, we have this plus symbol. If we drag that over into display string, we can now display a string on the left, and on the right, we'll display the balance. So then we're gonna come on over back to our values tab where we had that string input, grab that and put that onto the left side. And this is where we're going to type in colon space. Okay, so it's important to add the colon in the space because after this, we're gonna display their balance. And so this B value is going to be a number value. And it's important to note that number inputs and string inputs, while you can have numbers in a string, a number is not a string. This means we need to convert the number into a string, which you can use via typecasting variable as string. So if we grab that and put that into the B, we're gonna be able to put in a number variable and convert it to a string. And the number variable we want is here at the top of the values tab, get player persistent variable. And so we'll grab that and drop it in here. And then we're going to click the drop down. It says money. And then we grab the player from here drop it into here, and now we've got the player's persistent variable money. The last thing to note here is this isn't displaying on self because this is running on a trigger. We're going to delete self out of here, head back to our variables tab where we created the text object, and we can drag that in here. And now we are displaying this on the text object. Congratulations, you've built your first ATM script. This is incredible. Welcome to the other side with Phoenix, Paige, and Kale. We are working on an ATM. We've all created our scripts now. And so you can see we've all built these little ATMs. And the cool thing here that we've done is add these little hand icons to represent like placing your hand down is what's gonna display your balance. To make our ATM script work, we're gonna go open our build menu, head on over to the gizmos tab, and we're gonna pull out a trigger gizmo and a text gizmo. So the text gizmo is what's gonna be displayed on the screen. And so I know this is gonna say your balance, and so I'm gonna type your balance colon space bar, and then we'll type in like, I don't know, a thousand might be the maximum balance. And so the reason we do this is it's going to give us an idea of what the text size will look like. With the scale of the text determined, I'm going to then stretch this down so it looks really good on my display. And I like it just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my snap tool to snap it onto the black surface here. And, oh, it's giving me a little bit of trouble. Oh, there we go, got it. Can be a little finicky. And now I just gotta get the rotation right. 
I think part of my issue is because I grouped this object. So I'm going to ungroup this object while I work on it. And so now I'm going to select my object, pull down on my snap tool again, and grab that button. Oh, much better. And now we can slide that down. I turned snapping off to slide it into place. There it is. Perfect. Okay. So now I've got that in position. I'm going to move this properties panel off to the side because we're going to need it in a second. And then this trigger is going to represent where the player can place their hand to get their balance. So I'm going to go ahead and set it right over here, just above the hand icon. Perfect. And if I open up the trigger, I can see, and if I grab the top here on the menu, I can use my joystick to the right to enlarge this a little bit. So it's about, there we go. Perfect. So here I can see that the trigger is triggering on players. I'm then going to go hit my attach script dropdown, connect in the lakes ATM script. Here I can see that the text object needs to be connected here. So I grab the text reference pill and then I can drop it into where it says empty. There we go. So we've now attached the script and this should work. So let's go ahead and try it out. I come into play mode and then I put my hand down. Your balance is zero. I feel so honored to have a balance of zero dollars. So let's go change that. Fabulous. You guys, we've done so great building these ATMs. Thank you. Next up, we're going to be building a way for players to sell a plant object and make some money off of it. And so it looks like you guys have designed some wonderful plants here. And so I think this is great. So let's go ahead and start working on the scripting side of it. With the ATM built, it's time to give people a way to make money. And in this case, we know it's going to be harvesting a crop. So it means object enters trigger, which causes a balance increase. So let's go ahead and set that up. We're going to bring out a new script block and we're going to call this one the cell infinite crop. This script is going to be called sell infinite crop because this is going to allow you to sell a crop over and over and over again. And so when the world is started, we don't need that. What we do need is when trigger is entered by object, which is found right underneath collision events. So if we put this here, when trigger is entered by object, we know that some object has now entered our sell trigger and that object was tagged correctly because you tag an object to interact with a trigger. And so we're going to tag this as a special type of crop. So we know only specific crops can be sold to this trigger. So when that trigger is entered, we know that this is a sellable crop. We're then going to scroll to the bottom of our events tab where you can send event to the object. And so we're going to drag object down to self. So now we're sending the event to the object. And this event is going to be called sell. So we don't have one in our drop down. So we're going to create a new event and give it the name sell. All right, there we go. So now we're sending cell to the object. Before we finish with our cell infinite crop script, we need to disable the trigger so that this can only happen once per second. Under your actions tab, you're going to find disable and enable object. This specifically works on triggers. And so we're going to disable self. This means the trigger that this is running on will only go off one time per object because the next thing we're going to do is create a one second delay, which we can do by scrolling to the top of our events tab and we're going to grab when event is received. And at the bottom of our events tab, we have send event with delay. And so we're going to drag that down here. And then when my event is received, we'll go back to our actions tab and grab enable object. My event isn't exactly the best name. So let's go ahead and rename these to be called delay. All right, with those named delay, this script is done. I've pulled out another script block. This is called cell infinite object. And so you can see we've deleted when world is started. And this one is what is being received. So you remember we sent the event cell to the object. And so if we click the drop down, we see the cell. So we're going to grab that. So when cell is received, what do we do? Well, we need to give the player some money. But how do we know which player? Well, when the object is grabbed by a player, that is when we define who owns the object. So under our events tab, you'll see grab events. So when object is grabbed, now we need to go back to our variables tab and we're going to create a couple variables. The first variable we're going to create is going to be a player variable called current player. So C U R P L I D. There we go. And the next variable we're going to create is a number variable called cell price. And so you can imagine you might have multiple objects with different prices. For now, we're going to say the sell price is $1. And then we need to go back over here. When object is grabbed by player, if we go to our values tab at the top, we have set to. If we drag set to over, we can set that current player variable that we created to be the player. So now we have saved which player has owned this object, like which player grabbed it. 
Now, if we grab cell, I'm going to move it down here because I like to keep these in chronological order. It's not required, but it just my brain works better when things are ordered in the way they happen. So then when cell is received, what we're going to do is set the player persistent variable to be plus one. On our values tab, you're going to see this set player persistent variable. We can drag that over, drop down to money. And now we could just set their money, but then it's not adding. So we want to add to the player's money. So if we delete the zero, we're going to head back to our operators tab where we can grab that plus symbol from earlier. If we drop that into the values tab, we can now get the player's balance from the values tab and then add one to it. So if we go back here, we're going to need to click the drop down for money. And then this B slot is going to be that sell price variable we created earlier. So we'll drop that in here and you're going to note we still need to put in our player variable. So we'll grab current plid. And if you joystick to the right, you can actually duplicate this into both slots while you're holding it. And then you can let go to release. So now we've got our current player ID. Awesome. We are now setting money to be plus one. This is fantastic, but it's kind of missing a couple things, right? Like if we just sold it, we're still holding on to it. On our actions tab, you're gonna find force release. This removes the object from the player's hand. Now that we force release the object, where does the object go? Well, in our case, we know that this farm is just gonna be a regenerative farm. And so it's gonna be far enough away that the player has to walk back to the farm to grab another crop. So I'm just gonna have these objects move back to their original position. But how do we do that? Well, if we go to our variables tab, we're gonna create two new variables. So under our dropdown, we're gonna grab vector and we're gonna call this one origin position. And then we're gonna to go to create another variable, which will be a rotation. And this one's gonna be called origin rotation. All right, so we've got an origin position and an origin rotation, but we need to set them. So if we head back to our events tab, we're gonna go ahead and drag when world is started over and then drag when object is grabbed by player below that. And again, that's not really necessary. It's just kind of like for my brain. Then we're gonna put in two set two values. So that's from the top of the values tab, we've got set two. And then we're gonna go back to our variables tab, grab origin position and origin rotation. We can get the origin position and origin rotation of the object by going to our operators tab and scrolling down about halfway and you're gonna find position of object and rotation of object under the object transform category. And this is on self. Self can be found under values. And if you scroll down to value input, you'll see self is at the top. And then we just joystick to the right to implement that there and there. You'll note that when you're placing things in these slots that it highlights the slot. So if I grab self, you can see that it highlights this object slot. Perfect. All right, so we've got origin position, origin rotation, and now we can move it to that position. So we force release. Now let's head to our motion tab where we can grab move to and rotate to. And this is instant motion, so it's gonna move there immediately. And then we'll go back to our variables tab, grab origin position and origin rotation. Perfect. This object is now in an infinite loop and we can give players money for days. This is fantastic. With these scripts built, it's time for us to build a little farmer's like bed. So I'm going to build like four little plots of dirt and this is where we're going to place our crops that we can then sell. And so in addition to building a little plot of dirt, we'll be using the crops you guys designed earlier. We're also going to need to build an area where you can sell your crops too. So next to my ATM, I'm going to build a little selling podium where objects can be sold and then we'll connect it all together. You guys, this looks so it. gorgeous. Oh my goodness. You guys it have done does. such a wonderful job making this art. Look at this. So it's time for us to make it functional now. And so the first thing we need to do is go to our podium here. And so as you can see, mine is like a tube and I kind of imagine this is like a cell tube that sucks items in. And so I definitely recommend we add sound effects and stuff to this later to really implement the selling mechanism. So you hear like the ka-ching, but for now it's just going to be functional. Mm -hmm. And so this little black icon is where I want the trigger to be. From my build menu on the gizmos tab, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a trigger. Now you'll remember it defaults to players. So we're gonna go change it to objects tagged sell a bull. So basically any object that's tagged with the tag sellable can be sold through this object. Okay, so we've got sellable as the object tag we're looking for. It starts as enabled, perfect. Now I'm gonna take this trigger and snap it in here so it's nice and perfectly centered. And then I wanna smooth it down just a little bit so it's really right here on the top of this. Let's open that properties mm. panel one more time. We're gonna move it over here and then under attached script, we're gonna drop here and grab cell infinite. Oh, and it's hard to tell which one is which. I think it's this one. Cell infinite object. Nope, that's the one that runs on the object. We need the other one. Cell infinite trigger. Perfect. So we've connected in the lake cell infinite trigger. 
perfect. So the script Good. is connected on here. And the next thing we're going to do is head on over to our crop. And you'll remember the crop needs to be called sellable. So on my apple, I'm going to go ahead and move this down here and go to attributes and add the tag sellable. Okay, so now it's sellable. I'm going to head back to behavior, make it interactive and grabbable. So now the people can grab the apple. I'm also going to attach the script sell infinite object. So you'll remember this is the one that connects to the object. We have the origin rotation, origin position. We don't need to change these because those changed by the script on world start. But sell price, my apple is worth $1, so that's perfect. And this is all set and ready to go. So now that I've got my apple set up, I'm just going to duplicate a few of them around here on the tree just to kind of give it a really nice looking vibe. Love that. And then I want to come on over here to Merck's bell pepper and I'm going to set up his bell pepper so that it works as well. I'm going to go to the drop down, sell infinite object. The bell pepper is going to sell for a buck fifty. It's a little cute boutique bell pepper so it's very valuable apparently <laughs> so we're going to make that interactive and grabbable go to the attributes tab attach sellable bell pepper set up and then i'm just going to duplicate a few of those around in here perfect there we go okay so these are all set let's go ahead and try it so we're going to go script and I like to hit stop reset world whenever I run a bunch of scripts because you'll remember a lot of these are running on world start events. Now if I come in here, all right, so let's go ahead and grab a bell pepper. We'll grab an apple and I'm going to run on over here and let's see if it works. Oh, that worked. Oh, it worked. I got them both sold. And then if I come over to check my balance, I have a balance of $13. So the trigger is running multiple times. This is failure no it's not but we do have a problem the trigger despite us telling it to disable the trigger seems to go off multiple times per object so how do we fix that okay so we seem to have some sort of weird bug where it's like the pepper was still here but on my side it was visually over there and then my balance was just running through the roof and it's is it still running it's still going up oh my gosh is the apple there let me check like the apple's right here for me oh no, the apple was here. I just grabbed it. I grabbed it out. Interesting, but it was actually over here. So, yeah, definitely a force release bug. Unfortunately, force release is definitely a bit buggy, but that did solve it. So what we're going to do to fix this is everybody go into your script block, and under the cell infinite object script, rather than using force release, let's go ahead and delete mm. that out of here. We're going to head to our actions tab and grab set simulated, and set simulated to false. So this will make the object no longer something that can be held. This is kind of an old trick we used to use before force release existed. And then we're gonna create a delay, similar to the delay we created earlier. So then we're gonna go grab when event is received, and then we're going to go to the bottom and grab send event with delay. And so we're going to send the delay event with one second delay, and then re-enable it. Now we've got the delay event, so we're going to go ahead and duplicate set simulated to false and then change it to true. Now that we have the delay event, we can move after delay. Now I know my trigger is running at one second, so I don't want this to stay for one second. I only want this to go for like, I don't know, point three seconds. I just need this to be extremely fast so it gets out of there before the trigger is re-enabled. And so send delay to self after 0.3 seconds, which is going to re-enable the simulation, but it's also going to move it back to the other position. Let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll go again, stop, reset, and play. Come on in, run over, and grab myself another apple, another bell pepper, and here we go. That one went through. That one went through. It looks like it worked really well. Check my balance. I'm at 169 and it's not going up. This is great news. We've done it. Okay, so the delay event did work really well. We now have a way to give players infinite money. My balance is absurdly high, but uh, yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us in this video today. You have learned the basics to create an economy system in your world. If you'd like to learn more about this system and kind of more ways we can make economies work and make farmers markets like Better World's doing, feel free to leave a comment and let us know so we know to make another video, and we'll see you in Horizon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! Bye.